In part one of this series, you looked at how to create a very simple single view application for iOS 7. You hard coded the creation and placement of controls on your view, and you wrote code that managed setting up the event handler and those kind of things. With storyboards in Interface Builder, you can do this much more elegantly and separate your view from your controller code. This is a useful technique as you can then use the same controller code for multiple views. So for example, you could have one view layout for an iPad, another for an iPhone, but have the same code managing both of them. In this tutorial, you'll replicate what you did in part one, but you'll use the storyboard and interface builder instead of this hard coding. To recap, here's the very simple application that you had built. It has a label and it has a button, and when I click the button, the label changes. And that's it. But let's take a look at how we'll do this in Xcode using a storyboard instead of what we had done previously with the hard coding. So here I've just created a new application, a new single view application using Xcode, and I called it firststoryboard.xcodeproj. This creates a storyboard called main.storyboard, and the main.storyboard is launched because of what was set in the plist. If we come down here and look at supporting files and plist, we'll see the main storyboard file base name is main, so main.storyboard will be the first thing that launches. So what we want to do is we're going to add our label and we're going to add our button to the storyboard. So within this we can see there's a, um, a view controller representation for us and there's a view representation. Our controls are views that are sub views of the main view. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that view is selected, I'm going to drag a label and I'm going to drop it. I'm just going to change its size to make it a little bigger. And then I'm going to drag a button and I'm going to drop it. Now, if you're used to using applications such as Visual Studio, um, a lot of the plumbing for managing the infrastructure is handled for you by them and you just double click on the button to set up an event handler. The separation here is a little bit more distinct and as a result, you have to do a little bit more hand coding in order to make it to work. So the first thing to do is for our label and our button, we have to go to the header file for our view controller and we have to tell the header file about our controls. Now the rule is generally if the interface is going to do something to our control, like setting the property of a label, that's called an interface builder outlet or an IB outlet for short. Now you'll see I didn't name my controls, so what I do is I name the outlet instead. So I'll create an IB outlet for a label, and I'm just going to call it label1. Now I'm doing this within my header file for my view controller. Header file in C and C++ is what you use to define the, the, your variables as well as like prototypes for your functions. And then the other thing is then within Interface Builder, if it's something that I am doing that I need to um, capture a response to, that's an action that the, taker is, that the user is taking. So I'll define that I want to have an action, and the action is um, the event handler in Visual Studio parlance, if you're familiar with that. But the action is the function that's going to be called in response to the user doing something. And I'm just gonna call that button one click to stick with the same naming that we had in module one. So now within my header file, I've defined that this view controller is going to be the outlet for the label, and it's going to be the action handler for um, the button. So if I now, I've defined that my function is gonna be called button one click. So within view controller, I have to, um, within the implementation file, I then have to implement that action so I'm going to say an IB action here, and it was called button one click. And I don't need to track the sender, so I don't need those parameters. And then I just need to do something like label one. Now the code knows about it because I defined it as an outlet. I'm going to say label one dot text equals pressed. So here I've written my code behind for uh, this view within the storyboard. And now I have to wire up my button and my label so that the code understands what I was referring to with the IB outlet and the IB action are these specific controls. So if you remember with the button, we had events on the button that the button raises, such as touch up inside, touch up outside, those kind of things. So when the user touches the button and lifts their finger from within it, it's touch up inside is the one that we want. 
So I need to take a look on this list and to get this list, you have to select this icon on the right of the toolbar. If you don't see the inspector, you, you might, if you see a view something like this, you click this button so that the inspector comes across and then we can you know, take a look at the different types, identity and type, quick help, custom class, the button details itself, the view details, and then the triggers. So what I wanna do is touch up inside. You see there's a little plus there. I'm gonna drag that over to the view controller because the code that should get fired on touch up inside was implemented in the view controller and let go. And we'll see that the only IB action um, is button one click. So that is provided. If I had created more IB actions, I would see a whole list of them here, but I know it's button one click. So I'm gonna select that. And then we'll see if I come back here and select it that that wiring has happened. So touch up inside is handled by the view controller's button one dot click function. And then vice versa, if we want to um, use the label and we want the view controller to be able to address the label because in code, if you remember here, we said label one dot text equals press. So the code is addressing the label, but we need to tell the code what label one actually is physically. So we do the opposite. I'm gonna select the view controller. I'm gonna hold down the control key. I'm gonna drag then over to the label and then let go. And we'll see that a list of outlets is available and there's only one outlet that we had specified and that's label one. So now that is wired up. And again, if I select label one here, we'll see the referencing outlets. So this label within this view controller is called label one. I could have a different view controller with a reference to it and a different name if I wanted to. This way we're keeping a separation between what's in the view and what's in the controller completely even to the extent that the label itself is not named within the view, there's a referencing outlet for it. So let's run this and see what happens. So now when we run it, we see my button, we see my label, I click the button and the label changes, just as we had in the previous one. But in this case, I've been able to create the label and create the button using Interface Builder on a storyboard and as a result keep my um, view implementation separate from my controller completely and that allows me great flexibility as I build user interfaces. This is a very trivial example but it's a great way of demonstrating the power that's available to you in Interface Builder with storyboards and how you can follow a good model view controller separation as you build iOS 7 applications and we'll be seeing a lot more of that in future parts of this course.